Okay, hi booktube, Aaron here, hope you're doing okay. Recently I've been reading some poems by a poet called Pierre Riverdi, um, and I'd read a few bits here and there beforehand, and thought I'd plunge in and read this selection just to get an idea of uh, what he's like and what his, I suppose, what his project was as a poet. Um, this, is a, this is a lovely little edition uh, from the New York Review of Books, and it's edited by Mary Ann Cause. Um, and for today's Poetry Thursday, I thought I'd share you, uh, with you um, a poem by him. But I'm going to read this poem three times, um, because it's something that this little selection does quite well, I think, which is every now and then with a poem, it'll give you multiple translations of the same poem to give you a little taste of what um, different translators' approach might be. Um, and, um, yeah, I suppose it might actually... Um, maybe give you a taste of what you're missing out, maybe if these translators have translated more poems by this poet, um, maybe you'd prefer their style to another. Um, so here's a poem where we've got three versions of the same poem, and I'll have the original title of the poem in French as the title for the video, um, so you've got that there. Um, but uh, in this first translation by uh, uh, Kenneth Rexroth, uh, the title is False door or portrait. It goes like this. In the space which lies there between four lines, a square where white plays, the hand which held your cheek, moon, a face which lights up the profile of another, but your eyes. I am the lamp guiding myself, finger on damp eyelid, in the midst, the tears flow in this space, between four lines, mirror. And I think that's the most, in a way it's the maybe the most literal translation. I don't really know because my French isn't very good at all. <laughs> um, but it feels like the most literal translation to me. But it's also maybe the most abstract um, of the translations as well. Um, in terms of creating an image for us and, and the language itself. Um, and Pierre Riverdi was sort of labelled a, a Cubist poet because he was you know, friends with Picasso and other uh, Cubist painters. And I suppose he is sort of doing um, what they were doing, but with words. Um, and this is a kind of portrait, but it's um, in, in some ways very specific and in other ways quite abstract. Uh, but the, the next two versions of this are by uh, Patricia Terry, and they're both 10 years apart, so we've got one from 1981 and one from 1991. I prefer the later one, um, it just feels better to me, um, but I'll read you both and you can make up your own mind. So, uh, here it's called False Portal or Portrait, which feels a little closer to the French to me. In this unmoving square, inside four lines, a space for the play of white, the hand placed underneath your cheek, the moon lights up a face, another's profile, but your eyes. I am the lamp to guide me, a finger on a moistened lip, lid. In the middle, tears are rolling through this space inside four lines, a mirror. And then there's this last one, which yeah, to me feels better from 1991, still called False Portal or Portrait. In the unmoving space, within four lines, a square for the play of white, the hand which propped your cheek, the moon, a face illumined, another's profile, but your eyes. I follow the lamp which guides me, a finger on a moist lid. In the middle, tears are rolling through this space. Within four lines, a mirror. So there we go, there's some Pierre Riverdi. Um, I've been really enjoying it, so you'll probably hear a bit more about him um, when I come to my wrap up for July, which won't be too long now, it's gone by quite quickly. 
um, and th there's lots of other great stuff in here so um, I'm sure uh, it won't be the last time we've heard from Pierre but there we go uh, so until next time thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon bye